Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back and today I am going to be going over a question that I get asked quite a bit and that is I am building a 6 inch mini quad or I'm getting ready to build a 6 inch mini quad and I do not know what motors to pick out for it. And this is a good question because there's so many motors that are out on the market right now. Which ones do you pick? And all I can really reply usually to them is to pick something between a 2100 kV to 2200 kV because this is what I have found is in the right range that has worked well for me. I know there's some other opinions out there that some people say higher kV might be better. I understand that. If you're running 6S, things like that, total different setup. But this is over the last couple years what I found that I look for in certain characteristics and motors and things that I will share with you guys. So when I first started out, I mainly flew this motor here. This is the Cobra 2206 2100 kV motor. The main thing I liked about this motor to where I even will still fly this motor to this day, if, um, even though I have some other things in the works, is that how smooth it is. This is like my baseline of when I'm looking for a smooth motor, this is what I compare it to. It is just very smooth. The magnets that were used on the motor, everything just it felt very smooth. It spun the prop smoother than anything I pretty much have flown for the most part. It's always been really good. So this was always my benchmark. So when I say find a motor that spins smooth, try and compare it to this motor here. It's always been very well at being one of the smoothest motors that I have ever flown. That being said though, it is very just on the low end of power for a six inch. If you wanna be cruising or something like that, like park cruising, whatever you want to do. This is a good motor for that. I just don't find that it has enough power if you want a lot of pop out of your 6 inch. So on the flip side of things, you might have seen on my last video, I was flying these motors here. This is also a 2206 2122 kV motor and this is the V4 Hyperlite version that it has like the newer curved magnets and everything. This was going more towards like less efficiency, I believe, and more power. Uh, you could really feel like the cogginess of this motor. This is not what you would want to like lean towards your like baseline of a smooth like feeling motor. You could feel it with your hands when you when you spin it. It's not that it's necessarily a bad motor. I just found that it always caused a lot of vibrations due to the magnets that are used and how coggy it is. It was power, it's a powerful motor, but just the smoothness wasn't there for me. And it's very hard to find this balanced mix. And I think that's where a lot of people in the industry like kind of butt heads. You can't have the best of both worlds. You can't have the smoothest motor and a very powerful motor. It just doesn't really work that way so you could have a more stout motor and use you know some different magnets maybe do a couple little different things to it to make it work that way but to have both is just not going to happen but you could get as close as possible to making that happen and that's kind of like what i'm leaning towards with my motors which i'm not going to really talk about or put anything into this video yet just because those are still under development and i don't feel like you know, bringing those in to this conversation would be that good to talk about the specs of those. But what I will talk about is this motor, which is very similar that's been out for a while, which is the TBS Endurance motor. This is a 2206 motor as well, but this is a 1450 kV. But this has a little bit, you know, better magnets than the Cobra has, so you still get a little bit of that power where it's needed. But it's a very smooth, this is a very good balanced motor. I mean, this is very low on the KV side of things. I could run it on a six inch mini quad, but I'd probably want to be running like five or six S just to uh, fly this. I, I wouldn't recommend flying it on four S unless you're running like a seven inch prop or something a little bit bigger. And this is, this is what like for a newer line of things, this is what I would consider a, say a benchmark of, of what I want to feel. I want to feel in between the very smooth and the the cogginess should i say and um i just want to get that power out of it from from having a little bit better magnets and things like that the one motor that i don't even know if it's still out or if you could find them and you guys have seen me flying this for a very long time it's on this quad here and that's this motor here this is the brother hobby i 
the Pyro Flip sells them, or they had them too, I think before this motor. This is what they were making. But the only person I think that still sells it is Brother Hobby. This was their Returner, or their R, yeah, Returner R3 motor. And this was a, the best balance on the market I could find for, in be, you know, good price point, I would say. And in between a smooth not too coggy and powerful motor that's why i've always ran it so much i, I mean there's downfalls like the c-clip on here and maybe like the bearings which i'll go into next is what i'm doing right now is uh changing out the bearings on here they they seem to go out ever so often but this was the best mix that i could find so what i recommend usually when going out and looking for something is like I said, find something that, for one, what you're looking for. If you're looking for just, like, smooth flying and long range and something like that, these TBS Endurance ones are amazing for that. You still have a little bit of power, but it's very, very smooth. If you could still get your hands on some of these old Cobras, these are very good as well. I do find these to be a little bit more amp hungry than these TBS ones, though. So, between the two... Um, I would recommend going with the TBS ones just mainly for availability and that they're less amp hungry. But if you can find the Cobras, those are very good as well. If you're looking for maybe just you're not worried about your battery life or anything and you just want to flip around, the, do a lot of freestyle stuff, flip around a park or whatever, then you know finding like a higher KV or even like something like this, like a more coggier motor will do just fine for you but just remember it's going to add vibrations into your whole system and you might get a little bit more jelly vibration type of footage you're going to have to be tuning a lot more um which i found was very hard to kind of like tune out everything i couldn't especially with a six inch you can't just tune everything out now for uh, this motor if you could find this motor this is a perfect balance for me this is like okay if i want to fly long range pretty smooth I could get away with it if I want to fly like aggressive like around a park or the church or whatever this thing has a lot of pop to it and I could do like you know fat punch outs with this and and all that so that that's pretty much like the lineup of what I look for with a motor what I could kind of tell you guys to look for for a motor as well I won't really steer you guys towards buying anything specific because everything's always so tailored to what everybody wants and everybody has an opinion on those things but all I can say is if you look for these same characteristics in a motor I'm pretty sure that you'll be happy with the outcome of the tuning and everything that you guys want in a six inch mini quad so now that we got that out of the way I'm gonna show you guys um, how to replace a bearing in one of these motors so with a six inch propeller when you do crash there is a lot more of a force from the prop being bigger and everything onto the actual motor, onto the shaft, everything. And what I tend to find is not as much the bottom bearing, but the top bearing always seems to go out because of this force of the, the props, which makes sense. And so a lot of people kind of always, you know, wonder like, how do you change out bearings? I'm going to show you a way, I have tools here at my shop obviously to where uh, it makes it a lot easier, but I'm going to show you guys how to change out bearings with some simple tools that you guys might have at your house. Now I have already mo removed the C-clip from this motor. I'm going to pop off the bell. And I always find that the top bearing is easier to remove than the bottom bearing. I get a uh, socket, like a socket wrench here. That's has a big enough hole for the bearing to pop out here. And what I do is I just place the top of the bearing on top of the socket. So that way it would fall through the hole. Get a Allen key that has like a pretty decent, uh, you know, little rounded bottom usually is like a little bit better. And you angle it, you gotta angle it into the, the, the little hole inside the center of the bearing. And you hold that guy, get a hammer, and while you angle it, you just a couple little taps, 
the bearing falls out and it's right inside here and uh, same thing with the bottom it, I don't need to pop this out you just get a bigger allen key this one's probably what this is a five millimeter pretty much takes up the whole center of this then pop out the bottom one it's just a couple taps you don't have to tap very hard they do pop out pretty easily so don't go beating it into oblivion and destroy the bearing or the race or whatever especially if it's one you still want to save uh, you definitely don't want to do that then what I do is this is once again people are gonna have their opinions I soak my new bearings in oil so you don't have to do this but I do it um, one other thing is you could always check so this is the bearing that I popped out I don't know if you could hear this but you could put the bell in it and spin it I could feel how bad it's grinding like there's a bearing that's exploded in there or something but you could feel it's gr grinding on the uh, actual bearing if I take one that I've had that's a new bearing that I know in oil here and I put it on here this bearing is so nice and smooth I could do this all day it's like addicting just to feel how nice and smooth this bearing is and how free it spins but what I do is I pop this guy right on top of here I center it I, with as much oil as I have on here I pretty much could just push it in with my thumb and that's it that's how I replace the bearings if you do need a push it in or something you can basically take like this I'll, I don't know if you could see that but you want to get something that covers the circumference of the race and you just want to put it in there you do not want to mess up your new bearing that you put in but once you're done you put this guy on and ooh, ooh it feels so good but yeah, hopefully you guys like this video on just motor selection, my thoughts on it and everything. Hopefully that helps you guys when picking out new motors and how to replace the bearings when that top bearing does go out because when flying 6 inch mini quads, I feel like maybe even with 5 inch, I haven't flown with that in a while, I feel like it's inevitable that that top bearing does go out. The bottom one I always find usually to be in pretty good shape. So. Even if you got some old motors and you don't have bearings yet, pop out that bottom one. I guarantee it's probably okay if it's the right size to put in there and you should be good to go. But hopefully you guys like this video and I will see you guys next time. Have a good one. Peace.